So, um, as societies become more egalitarian, so their equality of opportunity legislation is more widespread and arguably more effective. And so that would be in countries like Australia, but more particularly in countries like the Scandinavian countries, because they've taken it farther than anywhere else. Fewer women go into the STEM fields. Fewer, not more. And so if you rank order countries by how free women are, there's a negative relationship with how probable it is that they'll go into science, technology, engineering, and mathematics fields. Now, and, and, and the evidence for that is very, very strong, by the way. This isn't just a few casual studies. These are large-scale international studies with tens of thousands of participants, um, replicated multiple times by researchers who did not expect to find that, nor want it. So it's reliable. Okay, so why? Well, there's a bunch of different theories. One is that um, the average IQ of men and women is the same. And, and that's quite clear, but the male curve is flatter than the female curve, and that's the, what, what do they call that, the enhanced male variability hypothesis, which has almost now become impossible to publish on because it's politically incorrect. And what it suggests is that there are more men at the very upper end of the intelligence distribution and more men at the very lower end. And that explains some things, like why there are far more boys, for example, who have learning disabilities than there are girls. And there's some evidence that men are more neurologically vulnerable than women because they're more specialized neurologically. And the, the advantage to that is this enhanced variability, but the disadvantage is the specialization makes them less robust and resilient neurologically. Be that as it may, that's one possibility. And I think there's a fair bit of evidence for that. And, and it's often the case that Differences at the extreme, even if there aren't differences in the middle, differences at the extreme actually make a big difference. You know, because like, let's say you're going to be an engineer. Maybe one person in a hundred is an engineer. And you have to be really interested in gadgets to be an engineer. You know, you have to be more interested than 99 out of 100 people to be an engineer. And there's not that many people that are like that. And most of them happen to be men. Now, people have criticized the male variability hypothesis because they've looked at the performance of girls in mathematics in junior high school. And it turns out that girls do pretty much as well as boys do in mathematics in, high school, in junior high at the upper end. And so those would be the people you'd expect to go into the STEM fields, right? Because they have the, what would you call it? They, they have the intellectual ability for it. But what you see is that the women who have high mathematical ability also tend to have high verbal ability. Whereas the men that have high mathematical ability tend to have less high verbal ability. And so one of the things that implies is that the women who have high mathematical ability have more vocational choice. And so they're statistically less likely to go into the STEM fields. So that's kind of an interesting, no one expected that, so that's kind of an interesting observation. And then there's another observation too that's, that's also extraordinarily germane. There's a variety of ways of are looking at the psychological differences and similarities between men and women. And the first thing that you might want to know is that men and women are more similar than they are different on all the personality dimensions. So the overlap is quite strong. The biggest differences are there's five personality dimensions. I, I mentioned them. Extroversion, neuroticism, uh, agreeableness, conscientiousness, and openness. Um, the biggest differences are in... Neuroticism, women are higher in negative emotion and that kicks in at puberty because it's not the case for boys and girls um, And they're higher in agreeableness, which is partly why there are far more men in prison Which is another thing we might think about is like what what is that? Is that gender discrimination precisely? I'm, I'm bloody well dead serious about this. I went to a NATO conference 25 years ago and there were a group of female scientists there who claimed that the psychiatric diagnostic criteria for childhood conduct disorder should be revamped because there were far more boys diagnosed with childhood conduct disorder than there were girls. And that that's the precursor, by the way, to adult antisocial personality disorder or to criminality. And the way that you equate it by sex, if you want to do that, is you get rid of the violence. So one of the criteria for childhood conduct disorder is kicking, hitting, biting, and stealing. Like, criminal behavior. 
If you take that out of the diagnostic criteria, then you get the same number of boys and girls. And that's what they were advocating for. 25 years ago, and I thought, you people are completely out of your bloody minds. Because the only reason that we ever came up with the diagnosis for childhood conduct disorder was because we were worried that the violent kids would become violent adolescents and that they would become violent adults. Which is exactly what happens, by the way, because um, aggressive behavior is unbelievably stable and difficult to alter. But they were perfectly willing to gerrymander the diagnostic criteria so that the sex difference disappeared, even though that would completely invalidate the utility of the diagnosis. And their, and their, and their fundamental claim was um, the reason that there were more men in prison than women was because um, it, was a form of, it was a form of arbitrary prejudice. And that this is absolutely insane. So, you know, it is the case, if you look at domestic violence statistics, by the way, women hit men more than men hit women, just so you know. Um, it actually doesn't matter, mostly. Not that it's pleasant, that isn't what I'm saying, is that men are a lot stronger than women. They have a lot more powerful upper bodies. And so when men hit women, the, the consequences tend to be very dire, and when women hit men, well, they're less dire. And I'm not saying that it's okay, but I, but I am pointing out that, you know, th this, this does happen. It's not the point. The point is that you know, we're concerned about criminality because we don't want violent people attacking other people in the streets, disrupting the harmony of society, and generally corrupting the integrity of the state. And so we put them in prison. And most of them are men. It's like 10 to 15 to 1, and it's like that worldwide. Okay, what? We're going to do 50% are now going to be women? So, seriously, look, if, if, the, if, the, if, the, if the theory is the only goddamn difference between men and women is a consequence of the oppressive social structure, that cuts both ways. And what that means is that if 85% or 90% of the people who are in prison are male, then the prison system is unbelievably prejudiced against men. So are we going to act on that? And how? That's easy. We lower the standards of criminal behavior for women until we equate the number of men and women who are imprisoned. <laughs> Look, that's what you're going to do. Yeah, you know, you, you think that's funny. That's what happens in the military, especially at the higher ends, you know, in, in, in the operations like Navy SEALs or the places where there's tremendous emphasis on physical readiness. The only way you can equate by gender is to reduce the performance criteria that the women have to attain. So if you can do it there, then why the hell can't you do it for criminality? If the goal is equality of outcome, where are you going to stop? And that's easy. If the goal is equality of outcome, you stop when the outcomes are equal. And not just the desirable outcomes. You know, you hear about the fact that, well, if you look at the C-suites of major corporations, that a majority of the people are men. It's like, well, the first thing I think about that is, well, what the hell's your point? It's like, that's hardly anyone, right? 99% of men, 99.9% .9 of men, are not on the C-suites of large corporations. So we're talking about a very tiny proportion of the population, and they're strange people, right? I, they are. They are. They're not normal people. And the reason I say that is because, first of all, they're very intelligent, most of them. So, so that, that, that takes the first slice. And the second slice is, all they do is work. Like 80 hours a week. And not everybody wants to do that. And, and why should they? It's like, whoever said that you should work 80 hours a week? But if you're going to rise to that level in any profession, I don't give a damn what the profession is. If you want to hit the top one-tenth of one percent in your profession, then all you do is work. And not only do you work, you work hard and efficiently, and you do it better than anyone else. Plus, you need the talent, and you need the intelligence, and you need the luck, and you need the health, and all the other things that might go along with that. And so the fact that a majority of them happen to be men, that, that, that says nothing about the structural, what would you call this? It says nothing about the fundamental structure of the state, as far as I'm concerned. And why are we concentrating only on the upper end? Like, why is it that it's the CEOs that count and not the bricklayers? 
you know, and, and there's all sorts of things we could talk about with regards to that. That's straightforward. Okay, so what's the difference between men and women with regards to occupation? Okay, men are way more likely to work outside. Okay, so now half the women who work outside, half the people who work outside have to be women. Men are way more likely to work in dangerous jobs. They're overwhelmingly more likely to be injured and killed on the job. It's like, okay, time to equate for that. I don't know exactly how we're going to do that. Maybe we just injure women randomly. <laughs> till it's equal. Or we force them to take the jobs. And, and I don't know how we do 